they're going to look at driving six to seven to eight hours one way to be able to have this care provided for them. Dr. Kathy, you're among the first to crystallize what this means for women immediately uh, in this moment. And again, I say this no matter where you stand on the issue. Uh, Dr. Kathy, just underscore what you just said. Explain that for our viewers who are watching right now. I know that you work at the Planned Parenthood in Little Rock, Arkansas, Little Rock Family hey, Planning. Welcome to the show. And you you As just said you moments ago see, that you uh, have now begun to call Roe versus Wade uh, to tell was them that they're going to have to make alternate plans. And, and, and for many of them, that means six, seven, eight hours. Uh, hopefully, you can hear this. Uh, uh, learn something new today as far as uh, audio sharing. Anyway. Um, Nancy Pelosi was just on spanning off about how the Congress is going to fight. They've had, since they've had the majority uh, to codify Roe Ro v. Wade, they didn't do it. Both parties literally use every means and every issue as a campaign issue. I was... I was talking about them going to use this as a campaign issue about a month or so ago when the first, when the leak first happened. In fact, at that time, I was saying that uh, since that leak, since it was leaked, you know they're going to make it a campaign issue, and that's exactly what's going on right now. So now I can't tell you how to vote. I can't tell you who to vote for. What I can do is say, why would you want to vote for? Uh, for parties that use a political gamesmanship, they should be running on actual issues that they that they have uh, uh, achieved, not this not causing issues to be ran on like this one. They didn't have to uh, uh, run on Roe v. Wade. They could have. Easily, well, not not so easily with people like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema and other people like that. But Chuck Schumer had the power to take those who would have not voted to codify it and taken them off whatever committee assignments they had and put the and put the ones uh, who would have done the right thing and allowed a woman to have have a right to choose. But at the same time, this is the same Congress that made, I'm sorry, but yeah, they, they made it a mandate to get a vaccine, which should have been about personal choice, not a mandate. And Republicans are, are hypocrites in this regard because they were against the mandate, yet they want to mandate people who, depending on the situation, are forced to carry full term a human being that may have been a product of rape, incest, uh, molestation, whatever have you. And if memory serves me, there are a few Republicans that have, that have stated that the, the United States is overpopulated and that we are lacking resources. What sense does it make to overturn something that would have guaranteed a woman being able to live and possibly live a better life because of the situation in which they got pregnant in. Um, and given the fact that if we do have limited resources in regards to consumption, then wouldn't it be, wouldn't it made better sense not to bring uh, life to this planet in regards to the future until those resources were replenished? Or is this a way for them to say, we have all the resources we need. We just want to be in control. I mean, either way you look at it, it's about control. It's not about a right to for someone to choose. It's about controlling people's lives. That's what both have stated. Well, not stated, but that's what the state with their votes. And that's what both parties have demonstrated. Um, yeah, it's like, okay, you're you're about guns and the freedom of having a gun but yeah you want to force people to force women to have kids they may not want to have had in the first place and again situational but still that allows for all the red states including ohio 
to who apparently has a uh, a bill in wait that has been uh, waiting for something like this. I forget what the bill's called, but uh, it's yeah. Anyway, to back to the news thing here uh, again. I hope you guys can hear this. I'll be double checking. Uh, immediately when it comes to a woman's right to make this uh, decision on her own. The former First Lady Michelle Obama issuing a statement moments ago, I am heartbroken today. I am heartbroken for people around this country who just lost the fundamental right to make informed decisions uh, about their own bodies. Again, uh, reaction from both sides of the aisle, from former President Obama, the former First Lady, uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi moments ago, and then on the other side, uh, former Vice President Mike Pence, who of course uh, ran on this along with former President Trump who said if elected that they would appoint justices who would overturn Roe versus Wade. Uh, you can never predict how many justices a certain president will have an opportunity uh, to appoint to the court. Uh, in this uh, case it was three and it changed the makeup of the court significantly uh, and we are here uh, today. Uh, I want to bring in Rachel Scott, who we showed you uh, some time ago down in front of the court. And Rachel, we have seen in these live pictures that the crowd has only grown, and I presume there are people there on both sides of this issue. Both sides of the issue, David, and the crowd is truly growing by the minute. This is sending a seismic jolt throughout the country, and we are seeing that play out here right in front of the Supreme Court. Because the moment that this decision came out, it was read out here on this loudspeaker, and you had this polarized divide represented. We're on one side, you had cheers, applause, tears of joy on the other. You had immense frustration. I want to give you a look at what are we are seeing behind us right now. On one side here, you have people saying, Roe was Ill illegitimate. You say this decision is wrong. On the other side, you have people celebrating this. We've also seen the police presence start to grow as well. You can see the lines of officers surrounding this fencing right out here outside of the Supreme Court. This fencing up around the Supreme Court has been up since that draft was leaked. It started and created this immense response out here. We have seen people gather here outside of the Supreme Court every single decision day waiting for this to happen. Advocates say that although this is a seismic shift, that the ground has been shaking for so long. Because, David, as you have mentioned, 13 states have these so-called trigger bans where, where abortion would immediately be uh, severely rejected or banned altogether, David. Mike, Rachel Scott live at the Supreme Court here this morning. Rachel, I, I really appreciate you reporting in. Uh, and reflecting the scene there on the ground. The crowd growing with Rachel standing by down there, and we'll go back to her uh, should we need to uh, momentarily. Again, the reaction coming in, uh, both sides of this issue. Uh, many believe this is a victory 50 years in the making uh, in this country. Uh, we heard from Carol Tobias, the president of the National Right to Life Committee, uh, who told me uh, she's ecstatic that this was some time in the making. We asked her about the polling in this country that shows the majority of Americans believe this is a woman's right. Uh, she said that should be determined at the state level. Uh, and that's what uh, many uh, on that side of the argument continue to say here this morning, that what the Supreme Court did was to give this back to the states, which is what they have been fighting for all along. On the flip side, we're hearing from former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton moments ago saying most Americans believe the decision to have a child is one of the most sacred decisions there is and that such decisions should remain between patients uh, and their doctors. Uh, Mrs. Clinton says today's Supreme Court opinion will live in infamy as a step backward for women's rights and for human rights here in the U.S. Which takes me back to Cecilia Vega, uh, our chief White House correspondent. Cecilia, you covered uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign going into 2016. Uh, this obviously was a major issue on both sides of that campaign. And when we think about recent history uh, in this country, it just shows you uh, an election can then determine, obviously, who gets appointed to the court and can have swift and major uh, impacts on, on the direction one way or another uh, in this country. I think, David, what we are looking at right now on that screen of what is happening outside of the Supreme Court is the legacy of Donald Trump. Um, this very much is about what Donald Trump did, uh, and it's not just on the Supreme Court in terms of who he appointed. Uh, he has appointed a record number of federal judges on, on federal courts around the country as well. And look, the I, I, I want to point out we're over an hour since this decision has been made, and we have still yet to hear 
uh, from President Biden or anyone at the top levels of, of his course. administration. We're waiting to find out if, in fact, he will address the nation on this country. Certainly, um, progressives around the country, not just in Washington, are now looking to him and to his administration as the face for what happens next. He will be the one to push this fight for abortion rights as we head into the midterms in a few months. Uh, the Democrats, when you talk to them in the lead up to this, having read this leaked draft opinion, um, had, had very much said that the issue of abortion would galvanize, would be a galvanizing one for the midterms. Certainly, uh, th that is expected to happen now. And we talk about the politics of this, but we have to remember the polling on abortion has been consistent for decades in our country um, by a majority of voters, a two to one or more. Yeah, consistent on voters. Doesn't mean uh, the party's been consistent on any of that. <clears throat> They're looking for Biden for leadership. If memory is serving there, I just, I just recently saw a picture of him holding a cue card with directions for how to get out of the room. I'm not saying that he's an idiot. I'm just saying that he's basically a puppet. He's just there to be the front as far as this country goes. I don't think this country actually has a leader, at least not a competent one, and not one for the people. Uh, and I, I can't say there's any parties out there that are not what would be considered a green, uh, uh, not green party, <laughs> uh, considered a uh, a positionable fucking uh, third party because we do not have any country or not, uh, any state that has a strong enough third party and has a ballot uh, uh, block that other than maybe the Green Party, but the Green Party has been shown to me anyway that they're just uh, a democratic ripoff. They have shown that they're, they're willing to go with a democratic uh, um narrative as long as it's not a republican narrative <clears throat> anyway that's pretty much what i wanted to show you as far as the part goes i think it's terrible they should not they should not have overturned uh roe v wade at all it's completely utterly fucked up i mean I mean, I don't know what else to really say about that because I knew from the very fucking beginning that, that the Dems were going to use this as a campaign issue because they were losing their ass off by everything else. Uh, they needed, the, as the reporter said, a catalyst. They needed something to boost their, their, uh, their, uh, their voter base. And the... Stop voting for Republicans or Democrats. They both either use uh, uh, issues that shouldn't be issues in the first place, create issues like this one. It, they both play political games that should not be games, or should be treated not should not be treated as games, in order to keep themselves in power. They don't work for us they are both literal corporate parties not just because they take corporate contributions but they are registered as corporations there is no such thing as a political party in the united states that i have seen that is strictly registered as a political party. Now, I don't know if that's not how it happens. What I do know is I'm vehemently against corporate anything in regards to politics. I'm against uh, taking down the wall between uh, church and state. I hate the fact that uh, HUD has allowed itself to be taken over in a way by religious fanatics in regards to housing. Like the one I'm in right now, which 
I should not, I, on a personal note, I should not be looking at advertisements for church or advertisements for sermons or advertisements for God or Jesus or anything of that nature. I should not be seeing that in the place that I live at. Well, I will be trying to go here tonight. Uh, can't promise I will be able to, but I'm going to try to. Um, yeah, we'll have to find out what happens. I think this is a travesty of justice. I think the Democrats should have codified this long time ago. They had all the time in the world to do it. They just, I guess they figured right now would be the best time to run on it again because they, that's, there's one thing they can promise is that they'll fight for this. I think it's all BS. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. They should have codified it like back in the Obama administration. But again, they wait for any opportunity to fight for something that should have been won already. Until they lose it, then they use it as far as campaign uh, campaign uh, issues. One of the things that Bill Progressives and MMT uh, is trying to get uh, people to understand that we can fund just through spending and it has nothing to do with inflation. Inflation uh, is based on natural resources that you may have. I mean, right now we have inflation because of the lack of supply chain, because we don't have one here in the home. Uh, it's like most of our shit that we get is from overseas. Um, but anyway, so one of the things that MMT can address is poverty, hunger, homelessness, climate and energy issues, universal health care, free college and trade schools, a federal job guarantee, paid family and medical leave, and student debt relief. Those are just a few things that MMT can actually help with in regards to helping people see uh, policies, end policies, stuff of that nature. Um, MMT is not a policy, it's a way of looking at how policies should be done. Anyway, that's what I got for a moment. If you're in Ohio and you're for the rights for abortion, then join tonight, 6 p.m. Ohio State House. Um, again, I will do my best to be there tonight. Uh, I do get prior, prior approval, but anyway. I'd say have a good day, but it's not a very good day in regards to women's rights. But either way, peace out for now.